might be pretty important today. We have got three great wrestlers, three great names from wrestling here today. Off the record today with, first of all, let's introduce him. Davy Boy Smith is here on Off the Record. Davy Boy Smith, a.k.a. the British Bulldog. Three different titles, tag team title, intercontinental title, first European championship. And uh, it's going to be a little good. Do you like watching yourself, Davy Boy? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's good. When you watch yourself, though, are, are you like most athletes and you pick apart the, the good things you do and the bad things you do? Um, I always do good things. Right, right. You're a wrestler. I forget. You don't have to necessarily give me the truth. You give me the good stuff, though. <laughs> so off the record with Davy Boy Smith, but we've got other wrestlers here today. We have got a uh, great name in this country and around the world, to be sure. The Anvil is here. Jim Neidhart is here, former NFLer. I'm still looking like an NFLer. Oakland Raiders, am I right? You're correct, Mike. Lifetime Heart Foundation member makes his home in Calgary, and it is off the record today with Jim Neidhart. How long have you lived in Calgary for? Oh, uh, Stu Hart had uh, broke me into the wrestling business in Calgary um, uh, when I was released from the Cowboys in 1980. So I've been uh, living on, you know, in, I lived in Florida a little bit too, then come, come back in Calgary, but I, I'm a permanent uh, resident there now. That must make for. Uh, Interesting situations as you uh, travel in the deep south of the United States, and we know the rivalry that has developed there. Off the record with Jim Neidhart, off the record with the Bulldog, and off the record with the Honky Tonk Man as well. Uh, he's cool, he's cocky, he is bad. The self-proclaimed greatest intercontinental champ. You still, uh, you still holding to that? Mm, no, I hold uh, other things now uh, as opposed to holding a belt. But uh, you know, I, I'm a Calgarian myself. I, I spent three years up there in a the cold, cold ground. Uh, you married I a Calgary to, girl. First time in 1981, I married a Calgarian. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got the best of both worlds. Now I live in Phoenix, like most of the Albertians and uh, some of the Canadians do. They move down to Phoenix. Like those Albertians, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you married a Calgary woman. Your, your, your wife was Miss Calgary, is that correct? Yeah, Miss Calgary, yeah. Did you marry a Calgary woman? I'm afraid so, yes. Okay, so. Seems to be a common bond between the three of you. We'll talk about the women in Calgary, maybe. They're so good a little bit there. later on in the show. Let's talk about Mike Tyson, a, a guy who, uh, well, I mean, you, you clearly can't help but know all about Mike Tyson from his last fight with Evander Holyfield, and a lot of people wondering whether, in fact, it will be his last fight or his fight with Frank Bruno. I want to ask you guys, if, in fact, as Mike Tyson says is the case, he believes that he will never be allowed to fight again, uh, could you see him as a wrestler? Um... I can see him as a wrestler. You know, he's uh, he likes to play dirty. You know, likes to bite, scratch, kick. Yeah, but the difference is he bites for real. Yeah, I'm not sure. You, you, you wouldn't necessarily want to go up against that, would you? Um, no. If uh, worse comes to worse, I'd I'd step in the ring with Mike Tyson. I'm not, I'm not scared of him. Yeah. I'm not scared of anyone. Right. But this guy beside me used to bite, didn't you? Me bite? Yeah, yeah you. No. I don't see what the big deal is about a little bite. For one thing, I mean, holy <laughs> so first of all, you deny biting, but then you're going, well, you know, right. if I did, it's not a big deal. A bite, a scratch, a little something, whatever, you know. But as far as that Mike Tyson biting thing, one little bite, big deal. Jeez, making a big deal, punching, biting, fighting. The guys are in there to fight, fight, fight. You know, look at the hockey players; <laughs> they can do anything. Honky tonk. I was going to call you honky tonk man, but that sounds too formal. Can I call you honky tonk? Sure. Okay. Sure. You got a problem with the bite? Not really. I think it was a retaliation. You know, if you look back at all the film, and you'll see that you'll, you'll see where where uh, uh, his, his opponent was about to, kept headbutting him twice, three times, and, and Mike Tyson, you could you could clearly see that Tyson said to him, "Stop doing that." He told the referee, "Tell a guy to stop doing it." And, and no matter what sport he is, somebody's going to retaliate. I mean, if you get chop blocked in the NFL or the CFL, somebody retaliates you know, sooner or later. Somebody grabs a face mask and snatches you down. Look at look at pro basketball. Look how that happens. I mean, every day you got Charles Barkley. If he's not fighting in a bar somewhere at five in the morning <laughs> over a couple of strippers, <laughs> then, then 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 you know he's fighting on the court. Dennis Rodman. Oh, but the thing is, all these guys want to try professional wrestling. So you brought that up. Would Mike Tyson want to get in professional? I'm sure he'd want to. They all want to be in our business but they can't stick the majority of them come in they last what did we say jim one match one match. okay well let, let, let's before we get comments on the majority of guys who try to come from other sports let's take a look at some of them um a guy that all of us would probably remember is dennis rodman uh i i, I say so yeah, you'd have to say he did a pretty poor job there he is with uh, hulk hogan 
Uh, Lawrence Taylor fighting, uh, is that Bam Bam Bigelow, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, even the, uh, the fridge, uh, William Perry was in the ring as well. So these guys have trod it. Now, I'm wondering what you guys think of that. N not the specifics in the individuals. Does it bug you the big money that these guys are paid and the big hype and the fact that most of them can't do it in the ring? It, it bugs me um, when, uh, you know, a football player comes in or a basketball player comes in and they get this big, huge money. More than I get, more than the Anvil gets, more than Hong Kong Man gets. You know, we've put, uh, I've put uh, 19 years in the business, Jim's put uh, 18 years in the, I don't know how many years Hong Kong's put in the. 21. But there's, there's no way that we get paid as much as those guys. And it's, and, and uh, to, to me, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. Because, uh, you know, why don't they send me into a boxing ring or why don't they put me on a basketball court? Why don't they put me in a hockey rink and uh, pay me the big dollars? Well, let me tell you why, Davey, because uh, people will pay to see Dennis Rodman go into the wrestling ring. Nobody is going to pay to see you play in the National Hockey League. I don't know about oh, that. I don't know about that. Now, Mike, you no. might be wrong about that. I yeah. might be wrong. Well, I, yeah. apparently if we're voting, I, I yeah. would be wrong. But, <laughs> but, but, I mean, that, I think that's the nature of your sport, that you can step in. Because, l let's face it, as, as much as your sport um, is loved, and, and I have to tell you, on this network, nothing draws ratings like wrestling. So I would never think to demean it in any way. It is still a sport where Dennis Rodman can get in the ring and can give it a shot. And if he's a flop, big deal. If he brings people in, that's all you care about. But that can't happen in, in other professional sports. Yeah, it can't happen in uh, other professional sports, but he still gets the big money, and, he, and he, he's a flop, like you said. Yeah. And uh, one match, you know, I'll probably make a couple million dollars. Well, we don't make that. So, uh, you know, what, what's the promoter thinking of? Jim, you know? if, if you fight him, uh, Oh, and you, you were fighting Dennis Rodman. W would you? <laughs> I'm, I'm liking the laugh. Keep with the laugh. Would you <laughs> lay a beating on him more so within the boundaries of what's acceptable in your sport? More so because well, of that? for starters, I'm a professional. For one thing, you know, you say I lay a beating on him. What does that mean? Well, I mean, you are in the wrestling business, the beating oh. business, right? Possibly, yeah. Right. Well, you know, uh, rest the wrestling business. We're wrestlers. You know, I don't beat people. You know. To punch a kick occasionally fine. But uh, Dennis Rodman, you know, he's, he's awful skinny, for one thing. Yeah, tall and skinny. I don't know. But, uh, most of these guys that come in, like Rodman or Fridge, or they're in the, the ring with the, the WWF superstars, and it's like, gosh, I'm, after that match is over, boy, I'm glad I'm done with this, and you never see him again. Yeah. Like, wow, he's like, escaped that life. Like, ah. Oh. <laughs> he just did disappear off the face of the earth. No right. more Rodmans, no more refrigerators, that you know. That canvas is so rough. Yeah. So you get the opportunity. So on, on one hand, you don't like them because they make the money. But on the other hand, nothing will give you respect and no, your sport it's, respect it's not, it's not, than guys like that getting in the ring and going, wow, this is pretty tough. It's not as if uh, a matter of uh, I don't like them because of the money. It's a matter of they come in thinking they can do it. After 19 years, yeah. 18, right. 21, they can't do it. They can't come in the ring and do what we can do. Right. I can't go in the I can't go in the uh, on a basketball court and do what they can do. I can't go in the boxing ring and do what Mike Tyson can do. But um, well, from for, a, for, for Jim one can night, do what Mike Tyson did. But for one night, I'm willing to give it a try for that top money, for that big money. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And Jim, I, I apologize. I don't know how I could have accused you of laying beaten on guys, <laughs> given the nature of your sport. Off the record with these three great wrestlers and three great personalities. Back with more in a moment. Off the record with Michael. Welcome back to the show. The letter addressed to me, but it clearly goes to you, the anvil. Uh, will Jim Neidhart be bringing back the greatest gimmick of all time? That being, who? You wore a yellow mask and yellow tights. <laughs> and then you went in the ring. So, what's the word? Well, uh, I hate to disappoint everybody, but uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> who? That wasn't you. Who? Did you, did you see what was coming out of my mouth there? I'm like, no, it wasn't I me. didn't see it. I, I, okay. I saw it, but maybe I didn't hear it. <laughs> no, uh, that, whoever that was. Yeah, people say, oh, you know, geez, Jim, you know, we were you wearing, wearing a mask? Well, it wasn't me. I didn't wear any mask, so uh, sorry about your email letter. It looked like you, and you are known to wear disguise. Did you see Although any beard like or sunglasses, sunglasses or anything like that? No, no. I guess not. So, so clearly it wasn't you. Let's talk about the international appeal of wrestling, and, and you guys have fought literally all over the world, and that, yeah. that's part of the job description for WWF. Um, tell me about a fan in Kuwait as opposed to a fan in Red Deer, Alberta. What's the difference? Um, 
stands in Red Deer, uh, no, no, <laughs> go on, say it, Davy. <laughs> go on, say it to me, Davy. <laughs> the fans in Red Deer know. It's all know, off the record. Uh, they know what the wrestling's all about. They know, they know, you know, it's Stampede the Wrestling. They know the WWF, the, the WCW, but. But uh, the fans in Kuwait, they're absolutely nuts. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, hold on, hold on. Lord. Honky Tonk. What does he mean? They're absolutely nuts. Uh, I would suppose he, he, he probably, if it means to say that they really get a little bit more excited over exactly. some things. What does uh, that mean? Give me an example. Uh, probably hard to control our emotions, maybe. Uh, uh, a little bit unstable, you know, some of those places yeah. over in the Middle East are very unstable, and I can understand why when you, when you take a wrestling match over there and they get so worked up and into a frenzy. Uh, okay, you've got to help me out here, because... You watch wrestling, North America, yeah. from, from Sky Dome, from Madison Square Garden. And you see, what I see are fans losing control. So if you're telling me in Kuwait they really lose control, i got to know what that means. Like, what are they like doing? Like saliva there? coming out of their mouth and stuff like that. It means they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll uh, shoot you, they'll stab you. They'll, uh, last time I was there, they threw a brick in the ring, and I saw it coming, and I doped, and they hit the referee. Well, I have been knocked him out cold. I was wrestling Shawn Michaels, I and, I, and I said... This this wouldn't happen in the states. This wouldn't happen. It would in not Red happen in Red Deer, Deer or Red Deer. Lethbridge, yeah. or, or Toronto. Toronto. I'll cast I don't it. Know about Toronto. <laughs> Anvil, what, what's the what's the worst thing that that you have seen from the ring or walking in the ring or uh, at a uh, at a card that you were at around the world? And where was it? The worst thing the internationally. Worst thing. Internationally. I think dressed as who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the worst thing happened to me. Or that you've seen? Oh, oh gosh, that scene. Or, or that, that happened to you? That's a good question. Uh, well, I'll tell you, one time I was entering the ring one time in, in Muscat in the Oman, where we were just recently. And uh, as I was going to the ring real fast, some fan t grabbed me, touched me, and pulled me, and, and a big, big uh, rusty nail went right through my leg. And I had, I had a horrible time getting away from it so I could get to the ring. Of course, I, you know, I was a lot younger than I didn't know what I was doing too much. But that was fun. It was hurt. A rusty like, nail went a through your rusty leg. nail. <laughs> and, 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 then, <laughs> and then you went into the ring. I was, I, I got hooked up. <laughs> you, you didn't, you, I had to get unhooked. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking if that's me, I'm going home. But you actually went in and fought? Yeah, that's, you know, we have to go do that. Jim's hooked on nails. <laughs> <laughs> Honky Tonk, how about you? Uh, you know, it's, it's not the foreign thing so much. I mean, these guys know. Madison Square Garden in New York, when you leave that building, if you're on the last match of the night, you usually have to get in some kind of a, a disguised car or uh, the, the ambulance. They use the ambulance to take you out with the lights going. So, uh, so the fans will leave the ambulance alone because they, they're not sure if it's wrestlers in there or not. Uh, but fans get distraught all over the world, no matter where it is. They get worked up over certain little things. I mean, it could it could be over because you know Dad lost his job today and he can't buy the kids any more milk. And then uh, you know what are they going to do for school clothes? And then they got enough money to go buy a wrestling ticket. And they see a bad guy do something dastardly or some dirty deed, get somebody down, hit him a couple times, you know, stomp him in the guts. And and, and then they get all worked up and they start screaming. I had a little girl just the other night. I was in Seattle, Washington, and, I, and for some reason, I took the tape off my wrist. I had the guy lean back. I was choking. And this little girl, she's about 10, 11 years old, she was screaming and crying and clawing her face. And I said, I'm going to kill him right here. I'll kill this clown. I was wrestling Dorn the clown. So, <laughs> anyway, this, the kid was worked into a frenzy. For what? I don't know. Maybe I controlled her emotions for five minutes, two minutes. But that's what it's all about. It's sports entertainment. If we can control somebody's emotions, that's what we do. If Dennis Rodman can control somebody's emotions out on a basketball court or Michael Jordan, that's what they do. And all of you, the, th the three of you, clearly respect that. And while you'd, ra while you'd rather not have bricks thrown at you and, and nails stabbed at you and you'd rather not have to leave in the ambulance, you got to know that you wouldn't be making the money you make because people wouldn't be watching if they didn't feel that kind of passion. Yeah. It goes with the territory. All right, get That's the nails right. out, get the bricks out. Here we go. Yeah. Back with more Off the Record in a moment. We asked uh, <laughs> our Internet viewers a question, and uh, we'll get the answer when we return. About Honky Tonk Man, and if you'd like to communicate with us, we're at OTR at TSN.ca. Fax us, fax us bricks, fax us whatever you want. Back in a moment. We asked her on the internet, who's the greatest? Is it Honky Tonk Man or Muhammad Ali? 100%. What's the deal? You know, i got to tell you that normally we actually just slide in like a 1% to make the guest feel good. What, what's the deal? That, that's uh, terrible. Uh, well, obviously, you've got some, some viewers that were products of uh, American puppet school system or something. I don't know. And this free trade thing, they, they all just 
come on across the border maybe or, or something uh, with absolutely no intelligence. Well, the greatest, uh, speaking of no intelligence, that decided to get in the ring once with a wrestler himself. You, you guys, uh, Muhammad Ali did fight against the, uh, the Japanese wrestler, and I'm totally ashamed to say that I actually paid. I went to Maple Leaf Gardens and watched it. Uh, Antonio Inoki. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was terrible. And that, that's a bad thing for your sport, i got to believe, a promotion like that when it yeah. does. It was, uh, <clears throat> was the worst match I'd ever, <laughs> I'd yeah. ever seen. Right. He, he spent... Uh, fifth, but uh, Don you know, Inoki spent about 20 minutes on his, on his back trying to kick yeah. Ali in the legs. <laughs> okay, I gotta ask you a question. J just a uh, legit question. No time for an explanation. But if, if you were to get in the ring with Mike Tyson, um, no rules, anything goes, what would happen? I'd just go at him. Yeah, would you beat him, though? Um, I'd give him my best shot. Right. Well, you're in trouble if he gives you his best shot, though. Yeah, yeah. maybe a bite to the ear. You better get in close. nibble on the ear. Yeah. How about you, Jim? Well, listen, it's, uh, it's really a known fact that any wrestler really can beat a boxer once you've got his arms. And... Right. You just got to get in close, fight in close, right, Honky Tonk? I, I know the anvil could take him, and I, absolutely, I know Davey could, simply because Davey has a tremendous wrestling background. Uh, I, I would just you know, take him down and ride him like a stud horse. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Let's not go there. That'd be a good gimmick, though. Until his tongue hung out like a long red necktie. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd roll him over and cover him like a blanket. One, two, three. It'd all be over. Okay, best stick in, in your sport. Uh, we, we took an informal poll around here, and uh, we're going to pick for this one The Undertaker. Uh, I mean, he is just, uh, he's been going with this for like seven years, right? And it just keeps on working. Uh, flash bulbs going, the huge gothic music, the whole undead thing, seven straight years. Huge popularity based on his stick. You know, when he was WCW, he was Mean Mark Callis and uh, nobody knew him. I love his shtick. What do you guys think? Um, I, I wrestled against John Dicker, and he's uh, pretty size. You know, he's 6'10", <clears throat> 6'11". Six, six, he's uh, very agile, very athletic. And, the dead uh, man. The dead man. He, he, he can turn it on when he wants to. Right. You know, and uh, he turns it on about 250 nights a year. Yeah, I like his shtick. You like I, it? I think it's great. I, I, didn't, I never thought it was, would, would ever do what it did. It really surprised me. I think it, it shocked a lot of wrestling fans and a lot of wrestlers around the world that, that this Undertaker thing took off, and, and it's great. Because he was the same guy as I said, it, WCW. Right. It's great, it it's great for us, nothing. it's great for the sport, and it's great for him, obviously. All right, best finishing move. Uh, everybody uh, who's any good has probably got one. And off the record, we're going to say one of the great ones is the Stone Cold Stunner. There it is. I like the sharpshooter myself because I have personally been on this set and had Bret Hart apply it to me, and it was, uh, it finished this show. What do you think? You can still the wrath of it. Yeah, abs uh, Stone Cold Stunner, what do you think? It's, uh, stunned you. It's pretty, uh, effective. Well, that power slam you give, nah, uh, my, my power slam's pretty effective, pretty too. too. Baby Boy's got the power slam? Yeah. Honky Tonk, you did the, the shake. Rattle and roll. Shake, rattle and roll. Break roll. their neck. Mm. <laughs> Send them out in a wheelchair, man. Okay. Well, how about the strongest guy? Strongest guy, w, uh, WF, what do you think? And Will Nyhart. Okay, well, we were thinking uh, Emma Johnson. What do you think? No. You know. No? No. No? No, he's pretty strong, but uh, he's not the strongest guy. Okay, who's the strongest guy? Now, I, I'm thinking, you know, with, with Johnson. Uh, but mentally or physically? You know, he needs to fix his underwear, clearly, but oh. the guy is strong. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> strongest physically in your sport. If it's you, tell me it's you. Don't be bashful, oh, Jim. Don't it's be me. bashful. Uh, I, I probably am the strongest, but... Uh, Jim, you had the bench press record one time, right? Yeah. Uh, Over 500 or something? What was that? I was... Um, I benched 580 before, and um, I was a world-class shopper for 10 years, representing the United States before I got into professional wrestling and football. Davey Boy, you, you come as a... Uh, clearly, with biceps covered, but, but you know, the, the pipes are there. Let's see it. No, don't put the camera on me if you want pipes. Yeah, okay. Look at that. I'll buy that. Okay. <laughs> so you, I'm a Johnson, maybe number three, but he's not number one or two. That's what no. you guys are telling me. No. no. It's, between, it's between me and Jim. You got to know how to wrestle, for starters. Right. You know, the strength and all that, you know, is fine. But you have to know how to wrestle. Right, you know. Is it tough? Uh, I mean, you guys haven't had any problem doing it, paying compliments to other guys. If, if, uh, if there's a bout that you could watch, who would you pay to see right now? Um... Right now, this mo this moment, or uh, uh, what, what I've seen, either one. Um, Give me one historically, then. What, what um, would you pay to see if you could go back in time and see it? Myself and Brett in Wembley Stadium. That was unbelievable. Yeah, that was eighty-three thousand people out Dollar Arena. Sold out, sold more tickets than Michael Jackson, Madonna. 
sold out in three days, bam. Jim, what would you pay to see? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would probably uh, like to see some of uh, some of Stu Hart's early professional bouts in Menace Square Garden. You know, the older wrestlers that did, you know, they're, it was a lot different then, and uh, I'd enjoy seeing some of that. Hockey talking about? Uh, I'm going to go current, and I'm going to go futuristic. The Bret Hart boy toy Shawn Michaels match that will yeah. be coming up uh, soon. I think this is going to be the one uh, of all time. Uh, I think this is going to be the one to go in the record books. It's probably going to be the best of the best, and, and, and obviously Brett is probably the best of the best. Now, I'm not going to dispute that. We've had our differences in the past, but uh, I really want to see him put the sharpshooter on the boy toy. Well, they have had a great one in the past, and there's no reason to think that that one won't be great as yeah. well. Back with more Off the Record in just a moment. Time winding down. No, 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 no. Time is winding down simply because every time we go on break, me and Mike, you have something funny to say, uh, hey. something that, that you don't like about what Hockey we do. Anvil. Hockey time. Just, just respect me. No, you're, you're me, Mike. Anvil. What, what I'm going to call you Would you show Hawk? him what Here. Stu Hart, the famous promoter and hey, hey, trainer hey, hey, of the Let me take off my mic. Show him, Relax. Show him if, this if amazing you know business, role. You take off your mic. No. I don't know the business. Yeah. Relax. Put it on him, Anvil. Put it on me, Mikey. He don't want to be called Mike. Oh! Squeeze Jeez. tighter, tighter, yeah, tighter. Man. Now, you talk about finishing a show and you want to finish. Davy Boy, the British Bulldog, probably the strongest wrestler in the world, wrestling federation. Go give him a finish. Hold, 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 give hold, hold, him hold, hold, a finish. Hold, hold, hold. Power slam him, power Davey. Slam him Take right him to the mat. mat. Right to the mat. Right. Finish him off. Well, That's mean go Mikey. Power slam. Let's go. <laughs> let's give, go. It, give it to him right now. Give it to him. Oh. Have you had enough? <laughs> I didn't hurt you there, did I? No. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I think the question that all of us want to know is. Is it feasible that you could apply the shake, rattle, and roll on me? I could. I could break your little neck. I'm serious. I could too old. Let me test your neck. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight.